All right, you've set up your stream in OBS Studio and you are ready to add some flair like transitions between scenes. So I'm gonna show you how to do it. Here we go. Okay, so what I've done is just added a couple scenes that have a different image. That way you can see the actual transition that we're gonna add in action. So we've got a scene here with Super Mario and then the other scene's got a nice tropical background. Now you'll notice that when I click between the two, there's a just a, a slight crossfade. That's actually one of OBS's default transitions. You can change the duration of that. So let's go like 800 instead of 300, and you'll see that now it fades a little bit more slowly. So just keep increasing that time to increase the crossfade time. You can also just get the other default, which is a direct cut, and that way there's no crossfade. The second you go to the other scene, it just pops. All right, so there's the basics. Now we're gonna add an actual animation. Real quick before I actually add it, I just wanna mention that uh, I will get to the information that you or your animator is gonna need to know in order to prepare the correct kind of file for this. So just stick around um, afterwards and I'll explain it. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over this scene transitions area. I'm gonna click the plus and I'm gonna click stinger. Now you can call it whatever you want. I'm just gonna leave it as Stinger. Click OK. Now you wanna find the actual video file. So click Browse, find your file. And now you wanna add your transition point. So my file is two seconds long. So I'm gonna set it to a thousand milliseconds, which is the same as a second. And the reason why I'm doing this is because the halfway point of my file is at one second. And I wanna make sure that my transition covers the entire screen before the scene that basically will be underneath it as it finishes uh, will already be changed. We don't want it to swap too early and I'll show you what that looks like in a bit. Everything else should be fine. Go ahead and click okay. Now when I transition to the other scene, we should see a wipe animation. And there it goes. And if you noticed, you don't actually see the scene change underneath it, even though there is transparent areas in the wipe. Now, if you need to get back into the properties of this to change anything, just click the gear, as long as your stinger is selected here, and go to properties and then you can get back in here and change stuff. One cool thing that you'll notice is there's a preview transition button. If you click that, it'll actually preview your animation and you can see it swaps from A to B, showing you that your transition point is not early, it's not late. Now, what's nice about this is that you can preview your transitions while you're live without your um, audience seeing it. And that way you can make changes and stuff like that. Now, I'm gonna show you what happens if you don't time your transition point correctly. So with a two second file, what happens if I put the transition point in a really way too early spot like 50? Click okay, and now watch. See how the scene changed before the wipe happened? Yeah, you definitely don't want that to happen. I'm also gonna demonstrate what it's like if your transition point is too far along. I'm gonna put it at 1800, which is almost two seconds, but not quite. And watch what happens. See how the scene changed later in the wipe than it should have? So let's go back and we'll fix that. For two second, we're gonna make it one second. So the transition happens right in the middle of the animation. There you go. Okay, another thing to keep in mind that's really important. Whatever is shown here is now the global or default transition between every single scene. So even if I add a new scene, see, it even played the transition while I added the scene. And let's add an image. And um, something like that. I'm gonna fill the scene with it. 
and transitioning between any scene is going to use that wipe. So let's say I change it to cut. Now every time I change the scene, it's going to cut. So it's now the default. One way to trigger these things manually would be to actually select one before switching the scene. But I want to show you another way to do it that also involves studio mode. And if you don't know how to use studio mode, there is another video on that in my playlist. And I'll also put it in the description below. So I'm going to enable studio mode. And you'll notice that now you have a set of transition buttons here. And so let's go to another scene. And I'm going to hit transition, and it used the wipe. Now, the reason it did that is because the wipe, or stinger, is still set over here as the default transition. If I click fade and then transition, it will fade. Now, we've got some quick transitions that are already added by default, which are the cut and the default fade. So if I click cut, it's going to cut. If I click fade, it's going to fade. Now, you'll notice that now the default transition is fade. So one thing to keep in mind is that when you use these quick transitions, it also changes the global transition to a cut. So if I use transition, it cuts. Now you can add your stinger in here by clicking the plus here and clicking stinger. And now that's there available as a quick transition. But again, keep in mind, when you use these buttons, it's going to change the global transition. So if I go to a different scene and I click transition, it's going to use that wipe again. OK, so now that you understand all that, I'm going to show you one last thing before I go. So I'm going to set the global transition to a cut. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say for a specific scene and only that scene, I want a different kind of transition to occur. So I'm going to pick the first scene. I'm going to right click that scene and go transition override and then this I'm going to put to stinger. So even though the global transition right now is cut, whenever we go to that scene, it's going to use the stinger instead of the global transition. So let's go ahead and click transition. And it used the wipe. Now I'm going to pick a different scene that does not have a transition override attached. And I'm going to click Transition. And it just cuts, because cut is the global transition. Let's go back into that scene. I'll click Transition. And it used the wipe, because the wipe is assigned as the override for that. And then let's just transition back. It uses the cut. Now, the reason for that is it only uses the transition override when you enter the scene, not when you exit. Now, there are other kinds of transitions available to you than just cuts, fades, and stingers. You click the plus here, and you have a few more options. Swipe, slide, fade to color, and luma wipe. Just experiment with those and see if any of them work for you or interesting. One thing to note is that uh, a lot of these don't require a file be used, but actually have just preset types of wipes so that you don't need an animator or you don't need to create a media file that is played, uh, you can just use something that is a preset internal to OBS Studio. OK, so I promised at the end of this video I would explain a few more details about the types of files that you might want to use for stingers. So OBS really likes .webm, W-E-B-M, file types. Uh, and if you want to have transparency within it, then you need to have alpha channel enabled when you export that from whatever uh, program that you use to create the initial animation. Um, Adobe Premiere, for example, may require that you add a WebM uh, add-on to the program in order to export WebMs. Uh, but go ahead and give that a try. And you can also try other file types, although I can't guarantee that those file types will work. That's all. Make sure you like the video if it was helpful. Subscribe if you want to get notifications when I add more streaming uh, how-to videos. And I'll see you next time.